Hi everybody, my name is Rhys Barber, I'm one of the audiologists here at Audiology Associates. And my name is Taylor Green, and welcome to day 21 of Waxvent. And if you don't know what Waxvent is, guys, where have you been to start with? Uh, but secondly, uh, we post new earwax and wool videos every day from day one through to day 25 in December, like a little advent wax calendar for you guys. Not as nice as the chocolate ones. Though. No, no, <laughs> not, not quite as tasty, unfortunately. Uh, so this is your patient, this one? Yes, this is, this is mine, yes. So uh, as you you can see straight away cotton buds cotton buds straight away textbook dent in the bottom of the wax there yeah uh, we are lucky with this in this case as the wax at the top hasn't been compacted anywhere near as much as that bottom section so you can see me here I'm just trying to almost get a suction grip on that wax you can see that side bit there starting to come loose so I'm trying to just roll this forwards but I don't think this is all going to come out in one go, if I can, if I can remember. It's super no. sticky, isn't it, this one? It's really, yeah. really sticky old stuff. Now, this is actually the better of the two ears, hearing-wise. The patient mentioned that this ear, she didn't actually believe that there was any problems with the side, uh, quite surprisingly. Uh, so, yeah, there was a um, standard size on the tube that we use in here, just to try and loosen this piece away, and I... I think, yeah, it's gonna break away that top section. So got a bit unlucky there. That's the difficulty when you have these really thick, stickier type wax. They, they, they do want naturally to bind together, but there's not a great deal of sort of um, structure to it. So they will sort of pull apart and tease apart yeah. then quite easily. Yeah. Um, so it's not always easy ones to do. Now this, obviously we're very, very deep here, but I am sticking with the standard size on the tube here. The reason for that, because it is so sticky, you can see little bits suctioning into the into the tube there. I want to try and get a really good suction grip on this last sort of plug that's in there, in a hope that we're going to be able to lift all of this out. And you can see all the sides there yeah. are starting to come out. So it's done what I've wanted it to do. <laughs> the last thing we want, isn't it, is to keep those little bits of sticky wax down in the anterior recess because they'll be a nightmare to get out from there. You can get them out by bending the fine end, but it doesn't always work. No, it's, and half the time, depending on how deep and how steep that anterior recess is, you know, half the time we can't get the camera in no. that far to, no. to see down into that. So that's why we want it all to lift out yeah. in one go. Uh, so the, <laughs> there's going to be a, a little while now where we're going to try and clear up these little bits. <laughs> but uh, uh, yeah, we've, we've technically finished the job. We've, we've cleared the ear, well, we've cleared the blockage, I should say. We can now see the eardrum. Uh, the patient is hearing a little better, even though she mentioned there was no problems with the side. There was a notable difference after this plug had been removed. It's not unusual. If you get a, even a, just a tiny little gap in that wax somewhere, the sound yeah. can still get through. So it's not unusual to get patients come through and you know, they only complain of one side being an issue for them. When you take a look, there's actually wax in both. And you'll have sometimes quite a large, substantial piece of wax in there. But as long as that little gap is maintained all the way down, that patient wouldn't even know they had that problem there uh, unless it was sort of intermittently blocking and blocking with maybe like baths and showers or if they lay on it and it was blocking. That would be the only time they, they really sort of notice any issues then. So we're obviously thin, going, yeah. yeah, I was going to say, we're obviously going back in here. <laughs> okay. There's that little darker section I'm going to, I'm trying to, to take away. So we take this little bottom section on the side yeah. and now we're just going to, I was hoping that that was going to start peeling away so we could remove that whole uh, side section there, but it, it's just not going anywhere and I don't want to risk touching up against the ear canal. That's what makes this particular consistency of wax difficult isn't yeah. it when it comes away and sticks to the side of the canal wall it looks worse than it is in there because basically what this is, is a mixture of very thin layer of wax a bit of oil in there which has been discolored you know with it to the same color as the wax unfortunately but it, that's all that is you know the skin underneath is nice and healthy the eardrum's good there's a good gap there the sound's getting through um so this is more just personal preference as to whether you remove these bits yeah. really we we're going to try a little bit further here, but I, I, I'm, I'm not overly concerned about, you know, these little bits that are left here. I'm not concerned about them at all, actually, because they will start 
migrating, as I said, quite naturally, they start coming up by themselves. Oh, yeah, sorry. I might have been talking into my chest there. <laughs> <laughs> but um, with, when you're looking at these uh, little sort of sticky bits, they will tend to migrate out over bath showers, you know, and it's just the general migration is going to take them out. But massive difference there Big in, uh, difference, in yeah. how it looks. A very different story on this side, though. Yeah, same patient. You can already see part of the eardrum on this side but this wax is obviously a lot softer the patient has used more drops on this side because this is the ear that the patient was having problems with uh, hearing wise so no pain associated with this uh, no discomfort just a really blocked up sensation uh, not surprising as well because this soft wax has really got itself stuck and wedged right around that uh, well, just in front of the eardrum on in mm. the anterior recess so you can already see there's a lot of dead skin in here as well. So we're just gently trying to peel this down the ear canal in a hope that it's gonna start pulling up some of those uh, thicker, softer bits and um, deeper in there. Yeah, it's with these types, when you see wax looks like this, it's very soft, squishy, runny wax. It tends to be the patient's used a little bit more of an aggressive wax softener. So you're talking something along the line of a peroxide or bicarbonate drop. Yeah. And when we talk all the time about the difference between irrigation and microsuction, we talk about, I know in a lot of people comment from the US and they talk about the fact that a lot of the uh, audiologists over there, uh, they carry out irrigation. They find it very difficult for someone to, uh, to find someone that does microsuction like we do here in the UK. And the old preparation is very, very different, isn't it? So you're, if you're preparing somebody for irrigation, you want that wax soft and squishy. So a, a really aggressive drop, a drop is really helpful. But when you're looking at microsuction, you want to keep that substance of the wax there and just soften the outside edge so we prefer an olive oil drop it keeps everything a lot uh a lot easier for us to take away it stays together in bigger clumps yeah. as well because this is literally like trying to suction yeah. soup up a straw isn't it it's not, uh, not the nicest of things to do yeah and we know it's very difficult because you, you're not going to know what your own wax looks no. like you know it's, no that's true it's it is very difficult but we we only suggest usually a small amount of oil yeah uh not continued use for weeks and weeks and weeks on yeah. it because that will have a similar effect yeah uh, to those stronger drops that's right and where the wax is stuck at the moment that's the bottom of the eardrum yeah so that's your pars tensor yeah. there isn't it so it's it's the bit that that passes the majority of the sound through when the sound hits the eardrum the top is the pars flaccida which was already exposed not so good at transmitting sound through. So what this means is that a patient where the part of the adrenaline that will be vibrating and getting most of the sound through has actually been stuck completely covered with wax, which yeah. is why they're having so much difficulty. And again, we've luckily managed to remove all the troublesome wax from in front of the eardrum here. Yeah. Uh, again, this is just the tidying up. Uh, it, not as easy as it looks. No. Um, again, we do get a lot of people <laughs> sort of commenting and saying, "Why didn't you go in there and just, you know, <laughs> take off that?" But it, it's it's not as easy as it looks. No, it's, it's not. It's you, really not. You you with this particular in this depth of ear canal as well. These ear canal walls here are so so sensitive, and you're talking those are so thin. The the size of the fine end, which is the tube you can see on it at the moment, is about just over a millimeter, about one point yeah. five, I think, something like that. So you, it gives you an appreciation for how small these little bits are in there as well. We're talking of a space about the size of the yeah. front of your little the tip of your little finger. So if you look yeah. at the front of your little finger. That's the space we're working in, so it's very, very small. Yeah, it's tiny, tiny, teeny, tiny little gap <laughs> teeny, to work teeny, in. Teeny. Um, well, no ruler shot for this one. Oh, yes, yes, sorry, guys, no ruler shot for this one. Uh, just purely because there was like this much that came out. It was like, like, minuscule, so I didn't, I didn't bother, sorry. Yeah, everything guys. ended up in the tank. And Most you guys don't like tank, tank shots. No, that's the problem, no. so that's the problem. Well, guys, <laughs> thank you very much for, ah, I forgot to. If you enjoyed the video, uh, give us a like. If you really enjoyed the video, consider subscribing to the channel as well. That'd be fantastic. Uh, and as always, guys, take care of yourselves. Take care of your ears. And take care of one another. And we'll see you for day 22. 22. 22, yeah, 22. tomorrow, <laughs> yeah. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.